this week's episode, we travel to the home of the Great Pyramids, Cairo, Egypt, where a young yoga instructor is on a mission to spread peace, love, and zen in the Middle East. We're exploring the foundations of yoga, its benefits, and a whole lot more, right here on the Borderless Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Borderless Podcast. This is Ali. And I'm Ben. Nice to see you guys. And our, our guest hails from Cairo, Egypt, the capital, where actually I spent the last four months of my trip. That was kind of the place where it all ended before coming back to America pre-COVID. And uh, her name is Layla, and she's going to be talking to us today. Layla, you want to say hi to the audience? Hello from Sound of Pyramids. <laughs> Welcome, Layla. It's so good to have you good to have you guys as well <laughs> thank you for being here really appreciate it and um we wanted to talk to Layla today about something that's near and dear to her heart and something that she does kind of on the side but kind of as a professional you know like full-time job thing as well which is she practices yoga and uh Ooh. she yeah, and not just privately, but as a public thing. I know that um, you share that with uh, with your fans and the people that follow you. Um, so, Layla, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, how you got into yoga, what you do as a person aside from yoga, just a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and a little bit of background for the audience. Basically, I grew up in the UK. I grew up there most of my life coming back and forth to Egypt in the summer holidays. My dad's English and my mom's Egyptian. Then I moved here. But throughout kind of my life, I've witnessed yoga. So I wasn't a big part of that for a really long time until, I mean, really late stages. Like my mom was big on Tai Chi and she was big on yoga. She used to do Tai Chi and yoga in little community centers because we just hop around. We were very nomadic. My dad had different jobs, different places. So every time we would move to somewhere, my mom would really want to immerse herself in the community in the UK because she's it's a very Egyptian thing. You just want to immerse yourself in the community. I liked that she was so immersed. I didn't understand what she was doing, obviously, to me. Like, she was just doing slow motion stuff. Like, <laughs> as a kid, you're just like, well, <laughs> what is all the slow stuff you're doing? But I'm feeling it. <laughs> so, um, and then we moved here and I finished um, high school. So I went here in seventh grade and I actually went into American Diploma and I finished my studies and then went into university here to study marketing. During that time, you know, the typical stresses of a student and like all oh, this and deliverables and all this stuff. And my mom was still going to yoga, even in Egypt. So one time I was just like, where are you going? And she's like, oh, I'm going to my yoga class. And I thought like, oh, okay. And she was like, oh, do you want to come? It would do you really good. Like you, it would be really beneficial for the stress you've got going on. But every time I saw it, it wasn't like someone my age doing yoga. So I was a bit like, mm, this isn't for me, but sure, I have nothing better to do. So let's go try it out. So obviously I went and my first experience was beautiful. Like it was the best because... Yeah. What happened was I, w I went in, we had this big, we have big sporting clubs in Egypt and um, they had it right by the pool, which was very noisy because you can hear like the, the coaches really aggressive and doing their whistles and being like, ah, get in the water. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is not a Zen place at all. Yeah, that's not what you want to hear during tiny. yoga. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was like a tiny little garden next to the pool. I looked around, I didn't see anyone young. I was like, okay, let's just proceed through my mat on the floor. Actually, I didn't even have a mat at the time. I had a towel because <laughs> I didn't know anything. So I was like, just take a towel. It's fine, you're on the grass. Yeah. So um, I met the teacher and my mom was like, oh, this is Monica. And she was foreign. She was teaching yoga in Egypt. And I saw her and I swear, she was in her early 50s. That's how she looked. And then when I asked my mom, like, how old is she? And she said, oh, she's 74. 
Oh, wow. Whoa. Surprise. I I genuinely could not believe it. She looked like at least in her early 50s, like barely any wrinkles, just absolutely glowing. She just looked the best. Doing backflips. Yeah, she was. She's doing all these bends that I obviously I've never done yoga before. So I was like trying to reach for my toes. And I'm like, <laughs> and I see this woman just go like all the way down. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so obviously yeah. I saw that and I was like, right, you are my goal. <laughs> and that's kind of what really intrigued me. I was just like, what does it do? How is it that special? I really enjoyed it. At the end of it, I was just super chill. We were in the typical corpse pose which is the shavasana where you lie down you're just chilling at the end (laughs) at the end of like the really brutal experience but because she had yes oh my god it's (laughs) everyone's favorite part of yoga especially if you've gone through a really rough one like you're like yes shavasana (laughs) so um i I tried the one where you balance on somebody's feet like somebody's like lying down and their feet are in the like oh, up that's like acro oh, yeah. yoga. That's it. That's like yeah, no. I did a bit of acro yoga, but I didn't actually teach it. The only time I think I taught it was in my examination when I was doing teacher training. And that was probably the unique part in what I was doing. But okay, yeah. Okay, so that brings up a good point. You are yeah. certified now. <laughs> I am so and you've gone through the training. So you yes. are considered a, to be, I guess, an expert yogi. I mean, I wouldn't say expert just because okay. it's so big. Like the, the, it, the, I feel completely insignificant every time I read something about it. Every time I pick up <laughs> okay. a new book about yoga, I'm like, oh my God, I know nothing. <laughs> so well, it's, so it's- how long now, how long have you actually been practicing? Since 2011. Okay, so 10 years. Yeah, 10 years, something like that. Um, and I got my teacher training later on, much later on. Like I see a lot of people now who get into yoga two years down the line, they go and do their teacher training. But I had no idea. And um, I did it in 2018, my teacher training. And it was actually merely, it was just a spur of the moment thing. I'd always wanted to. I was flirting with the idea for years and years and years. And then one of my friends, I think Ali might have met her from the friends and family, Radwa. She's also a fellow yogi um, and she'd gotten into it much later than me. And she went and did the teacher training and came back and said, oh, it's such a great experience. And I was just chilling on the beach in Sinai doing my, we were kind of nomadic at that point with our dogs kind of going from place to place and stuff and freelancing on the beach and stuff we were really kind of not settling down and I just literally booked the ticket I called her up I was like where did you do it what is this place she told me I was Rishikesh this is the yoga capital of the world this is where it all stemmed from and I was like right let's do this researched it booked my flight on the beach in that moment like it all took about 30 minutes more or less (laughs) Wow, but it was, great. yeah yeah it was just very spontaneous and I was actually freelancing right. while I was taking the course so I would wait we'd wake up really early like five o'clock in the morning uh do our cleansing routines and a lot of that stuff and we'd have about four hours of yoga practice split out onto yoga lectures as well so we'd study the philosophy and the anatomy and uh, teaching methodology and how you actually teach people and you know permissions and handling with people and correcting their postures and stuff and understanding the anatomy so you know if you've got someone with a specific condition what poses aren't okay for them to do and what are the modifications so they don't feel left out of the class you know and that's what I really appreciated in the course I think because what happened was that when I used to take classes after Monica left, she kind of retired and she was like, I'm done, you know, going on my <laughs> like end of seventies. I was like, what am I going to do? And I tried yoga classes and it was, it was, uh, it was a mess. So, uh, so uh, Layla, so your, your goals for yoga, are they more like health based? Are they more, uh, do you have goals to kind of push yoga into the, 
greater Egyptian kind of mentality of more people picking it up? Like what are, what are your long-term aspirations with yoga? Long-term, I would say that I don't, I know this sounds really kind of out the box, but I would not actually teach just your regular people. Um, so what I want to do with yoga is actually make it accessible to people who can't, don't think that it's accessible to them. So obviously someone with a healthy body and good structure and everything and athletic, you see them on Instagram all the time. Oh, they can definitely do yoga. But the amount of times I've heard someone tell me I can't do yoga because of this or that or this or that. One time when I was doing a retreat right after I'd finished, there was this guy and he he just he'd had a depressed period in his life um he'd had some injuries he was very athletic before and he gained a lot of weight and the first day of the retreat he watched from afar and then he came up to me at the end of the class he was like oh that looks really nice I was like well why didn't you join he's like oh I, I don't think I can do yoga and I was like what are you talking about of course you can do yoga he's like no I'm, I'm, I'm too overweight to do yoga I was like weight has nothing to do with this man like he's like yeah but I can't do this and I can't do that so what what do you think I'm here for <laughs> why do you think I exist I'm not there to just tell you to go into the pose if you can't go into the pose I'll give you an alternative you know that's that's the point of it so it's a lot of that a lot of people kind of holding back from something that can really benefit them and he did it the second day and I gave him the modifications because he had trouble still in his knee because that's where he did this operation he said I felt really good I was like yes keep going <laughs> and uh, yeah no the amount of feedback that I got from people who felt like they couldn't but when they did it they felt so good like they'd accomplished something I managed to do something I didn't think I could do and you know like I think any human being when they feel like they accomplished something that they don't think they could have done to begin with is such a fulfilling thing so that's what I want to do I really want to work with especially disabilities I want to get into kind of um, people who have a lack of mobility because I really think these are the people who need the space the most they need that space they're just either sitting down or lying down or something like that so they don't have that kind of space to move there are so many options for them and they just don't know it. And especially in our community, I think in the US, there's a lot of, you know, chair yoga, yoga for disabilities and things like that. But it's not, I mean, let alone yoga isn't that common in Egypt. How much of this, uh, you just mentioned America versus yoga in Egypt. How much of this is influenced by the fact that you are half British and half Egyptian. How much did you pick up from there and now you're introducing it to your other country? Well, I'll definitely give my mom full credit for, <laughs> for my knowledge of yoga because yeah, she she's just the source. Yeah, I just look up to her. She's always trying to find new ways to kind of get back to her roots. She's very, she just loves to be active and incorporating things into her life. And I mean, she's an Egyptian who lives in the UK. So I'm not quite sure how I can link that. <laughs> but ironically, I learned it in the country I would least expect to learn it in, which is here. <laughs> yeah, Ben, um, Egypt, I don't know if you know this, but I learned this when I went there. Like the, the younger generation of Egypt, they're almost like, American or Western or they're, they're very modernized. I don't want to call them hipster and then like suffer backlash online from all the Egyptians. Attacking <laughs> you, but you got some, you got some hipsters there. Well, Careful what you say. <laughs> there's some of those. There's some like you know beachy. You got, you got, you got hipsters everywhere in the world. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> True, but you know it's it's hard for me to. Um, fathom that this is easy for you to do in Egypt. You know, I, I, I'm Muslim at baseline, so I kind of know what the society and the cultures of Islamic countries can be like. And I can yeah. imagine with the, the male paternalism that probably exists in Egypt, 
And, you know, we'll, we'll share your Instagram with everybody when we post this so they can, you can get some followers and vice versa. You know, but, um, but you have to post some stuff that maybe like in Egypt, people are like, what's she doing? You know, so has that been difficult for you? Have you suffered backlash from the community? I think my issue with social media isn't really the comments it's like everywhere you've got cat calls everywhere you've got guys sliding into your dms or everywhere in the world so it, it exists you know like you can't just say it's in one country or another but i think i actually didn't have such a hard time kind of posting i had a lot of support from my mom she likes all my stuff and she's quite she's deeply religious uh and i'm quite i'm quite religious but i do understand that to each their own that's my philosophy on life you know to each their own you know you do something you do you I do me that's fine let's all accept each other and love I think that also stems from the yoga you, you have that usual just kind of those silly comments you get but other than that actually I get a lot of support and I get a lot of people asking me oh wow well, I don't think I can do yoga so I think I think the positive outweighs the negative in that sense a lot more that's yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a different um, world. This is a different world, man. It's it a big is. world. Um, it's definitely, yeah, you're right. It's definitely modernized, and definitely, um, kids now they're 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 just this new generation. They're on a whole other level. Like they got some awareness. Like yeah, no, yeah, definitely. They're yeah. they're definitely um, different to kind of our parents' generation which were kind of like, oh, you couldn't say this or you couldn't say that. And now these kind of words that weren't so heavy are now kind of the slang, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Uh, so on a weekly basis, how many people are you teaching in yoga? Currently, I'm not teaching anyone because of COVID and I haven't been teaching right. for a really long time. Um, but hopefully I'm going to get back into it. Um, okay. Initially, yeah, it was kind of a bumpy road between 2018 and now, but sure. yeah, I mean, my issue, it was always kind of, even when I got the certificate and I kind of looked in the air, looked at it, I was like, oh my God, this, this is actually official, you know, I've done this, kind of realized when I sat down and I was even reading stuff on the plane, I was reading the Bhagavad Gita on my way back and stuff, and I was so overwhelmed with the amount of information that I even didn't get in the course I was like all right I need to turn this plane around and go get my 300 hours now wow. <laughs> and uh yeah so 200 hours is the one I did and you can go up to 500 hours so you can take them in bits or you can just take it in one go so you have to finish your 200 hours to move on to your 300 so I was and thinking that, oh, I need to do that now. <laughs> sure. And at what point do you, be, do you become like the yoga master? I mean, wow. I don't think like, there's that like a yogi master. bear. Is that an achievable I mean, thing? Or I because I guess in I, yoga it's not so much I a competition. I don't the think there is, just because the thing with yoga is it's not just a physical aspect. There's right. it physical like fun fact of the day is um, that yoga is actually just a prep it's just the prep thing you just use it to prepare yourself and have your body flowing all your juices are flowing or your blood is flowing and you're flexible enough to sit in a position of meditation for long hours that's it <laughs> that's basically the rundown of the physical yoga we know but there's a lot of books you can read there's um and there's a lot of theories and there's a lot of things and philosophies that can explain to you kind of the core of what yoga is and there's yoga is genuinely when someone says it's a lifestyle it's not a cringy thing it really is the lifestyle you've got code of conduct you've got to have there's a way you treat people there's a way you treat your parents and there's a way of eating and there's alternative holistic medicine there's ayurveda ayurveda um and different bodies have different um 
types in Ayurveda and they need different types of food. So you have to follow these specific regimens and diets and stuff. So yeah, yoga goes way beyond anything that I could imagine mastering, honestly, just because I can't see myself being Buddha under a tree kind of <laughs> contemplating life. I don't think in this society we can really kind of sit down and yeah, it sounds that. like it's a, a, a real pure form of just dedication. Yeah, definitely. And dedication definitely. to your craft and your body yeah. and your health and 100%. your mental wellness. A hundred percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's respect. It's respect. You've you've got this beautiful gift that is your body. And it's like if you got a brand new car, you wouldn't throw stuff in it. You wouldn't spill your Coke on the seats or stuff. So like that's the same way just because you can't see what's going on inside doesn't mean stuff isn't happening. Sure, <laughs> if sure. you're kind of, yeah, if you're eating something that's not necessarily good, it's a lot of discipline. It really is a lot of discipline because the routine itself, the lifestyle itself, you get a taste of it for that one month and it's so intensive. And, but you feel so brand new every single day. You know, you sleep at 10, 11, you wake up at five, you feel so fresh. You feel so good. You're not like dragging your feet out. You have two new students. We're both joined <laughs> the Layla School of Discipline and Yoga. Um, yeah. Sounds like an old Russian novel. Yeah, we're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need it. I have chronic back pain and like oh, I oh, literally dear. can't move anymore. So I need flexibility. You know, I don't need to walk on water. I'm sure you're you're walking on water and flying and stuff, but I just yeah, I have chronic pains. It's just because you know you you can't keep up with it. But the one thing I would say since yoga is that you really once you do it long enough, you start to realize how your body is. So you start kind of catching yourself slouching and crouching and doing that stuff. So even on the desk, just a few days, a few hours ago, I was on the desk and I was like, ooh. <laughs> hang on no <laughs> and I'm like trying to figure out the yeah. right level for my laptop so I have my back straight and yeah you catch yourself you start catching yourself in these really bad postures and then when you actually pull yourself up you can feel that, that space you've made on your stomach and that that on its own is yoga <laughs> like I love it. yoga is just yeah Amazing. it's just so wide that you can really put a label on it and I think that's the problem right now that of people are just like oh this is you <laughs> <laughs> well that's how i know it i've yeah. tried it several times and i have yet to really find my inner zen if you meditate like i've i've had so many students come to me and say oh i can't i can't silence my brain i can't stop the thoughts i can't do this stuff and i'm like that's not that's not what meditation is you know if it's just allowing your thought to come saying hey but you got to go now, <laughs> acknowledging it and then letting it kind of go. It's like a cloud. They always tell, tell you that in like any guided meditation videos you ever hear. They say, oh, treat your thoughts like a cloud, let them pass. And it really is like that. You can't like physically force your brain to shut off because that doesn't work. That doesn't exist. You can't really do that. But it's just embracing the thought, not dwelling on it and not attaching yourself to it. And that's a big part of yoga, that non-attachment of it's okay. If something doesn't go the way you want it, don't dwell on it, don't attach yourself to it. And that's one of the limbs actually, where you practice a, a big period of your time is practicing that non-attachment. And you know what, I'm, I, you know, my favorite vase broke. I'm not gonna cry over it. Thank you, you've served me. I've got to move on now. So like, and that's kind of embracing the pain, but letting it pass, you know? And that's a big part of it as well. Amazing. Embrace the thought, don't dwell on it, move past yeah. it. Like yeah. that. Does yoga come with that amazing accent that you have? Because I would love to like do the <laughs> yoga and get that. I start practicing while I speak like oh my this. God, I get so much heat for it here. <laughs> People are always telling me, oh, I feel like, um i'm i'm hearing a scene from downton abbey or harry potter and i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you you'll get the heat you'll get the heat i've just learned to Cersei lannister 
Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Layla. This was this was fantastic. Um, I'm I'm in awe, Ben. It's uh, yeah, I wish this I knew is more. You know. I'm curious, Layla. Before we take off, can you can you maybe give us a little bit of a? You gave us some great advice. I love that. Maybe walk us through a quick guided like. 30 second meditation. Can you meditation? do that? Is that, is that oh possible? God. How can I, how can what? people like my, myself and Ali calm our minds after a long day at work and just wind down? Like What's not using drugs. Like how do we do that? Without like... using drugs <laughs> <laughs> or, or heavy off. amounts of alcohol. <laughs> um, 30 seconds. I don't think I can do that, but like. Give us your best. Just, I'll give, you just give me a position right or something. Yeah. I mean, no, you can sit in whatever position, like okay. whatever makes you feel chill. And all right. <laughs> all right, that's what makes you feel chill. You do you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Um, you can close your eyes. You can gaze on something specifically. If you don't feel like you want to close your eyes, you can, I don't know, look at the keys of your laptop or that's what i'll do you know, okay fine let's do 10 seconds of that yeah. all right those eyes look at the laptop the keys of my, my keyboard nice yeah. deep breaths counting to four as you breathe in and holding it for six and then exhaling for eight seconds kind of start feeling your body relax as you do that exhale kind of feel your heart rate slow down i felt my blood pressure go down like <laughs> kind of fainting tap out. <laughs> yeah some people get tingles some people but yeah feels it's great that, Layla. that feels fantastic yeah, yeah. the ma the magic of breath work <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Seriously, I think I, I got to start doing this. Yeah, no. And it's really good, actually, um, to get yourself to sleep. If you're kind of fidgeting and frolicking in bed and you can't get yourself to sleep and you've got insomnia, taking those, doing the four, six, eight, or whatever ratio you want, depending on kind of the shortness of breath or not, um, kind of taking that and working with that ratio and breathing in, holding, breathing out, kind of gets you you start yawning automatically and you're like oh i do it with the students and they start snoring in the end of class and it's so fun <laughs> <laughs> but i know they've had a good time so <laughs> well thank you again for joining us really appreciate you yeah. having me here thank where you. can we find you online layla for our audience um i think i'm on instagram and all right we will make sure to <laughs> tag the wonderful Layla in the comments. If you're curious about the uh, the yoga lifestyle and you want to learn more, we're actually going to yeah. do online uh, classes soon as well. So, all right, excellent. Two first uh, members going across the borders. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Ben, that was great. I feel calm. This was fun. This was the most calming podcast we have. Calming, done. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh but thank you Layla again uh I clearly met the wrong family members when I was in Egypt and um thank yeah. you for making me feel <laughs> like I'm living a crappy lifestyle but I have things I need to change oh, um they're wonderful maybe we can do this again in the future because I'm sure there will be high demand but Ben on the uh the next podcast, we are once again headed to a different continent, back to Asia, to the country of Bhutan. And I have been waiting a very long time for this. And it actually goes hand in hand with Layla's lifestyle. It is considered the happiest place on earth, I believe. Really? And uh, mm -hmm. it is. It is. So we will be bringing you a conversation from Bhutan with people from the ground over there telling us a little bit about everything that's going on in the happiest place on earth. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. See you guys in Bhutan and Layla. Namaskar.
Is that right? Namaste. Namaste, Ali. Namaste. Uh, I'm pretty sure they say Namaste. Namaste at home. Namaste at home. Namaste in bed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, everybody, take care. Thank you again.